Hey there, so this time we're gonna replace, uh, we're gonna fix a keyboard on a 15 inch retina. Uh, this is E1398 model. Not sure which year is this, I think this is 2013. So, in terms of fixing a keyboard on this one, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, if you take it somewhere to a shop, they usually tell you that you need to replace this whole, uh, whole top assembly, which is not the case you can actually replace the keyboard the keyboard needs to be pretty much ripped out from the case to be replaced um, basically you gotta take everything out from the laptop other than the battery and uh, take out the keyboard so you can put another one in uh, in some of the cases there will be screw holes after you take the keyboard out in some of the cases there won't in that case you need to improvise. We'll see which one this is when we open it up. Okay. So to open the bottom you'll need a pentalobe screwdriver that you need to open any retina or uh, MacBook here. Take out 10 screws, leave the bottom and then pretty much start taking out the stuff from it. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff in there that you need to be careful with. I'll blow this out a little bit, there's a lot of dust. These models, like all the other, have terrible cooling system. So dust just collects inside. Okay, so i got to unplug this. This is the speaker. Plug pretty much all the connectors out from the board. Unplug the battery. Maybe that's something you should unplug first, just in case. That's the keyboard connector. We have here the second speaker. And we're pretty much going to start taking out the stuff one by one. Try to remember where the screws go, or at least line them up so that you know where to put the screws that you took off from certain things. This is the fan. Be careful, it has a little ledge connector here so you don't rip that off. Let's do the other one. Take out all three screws. Okay, so for you to take out the third screw here, we gotta pull out this cable. This is the camera cable. This is actually a 2012 model. Unplug the antennas for the Wi-Fi. Uh, the way I know it's 2012 model is because it has a narrow camera connector. As you can see, it's not wide like on the 2013 models. Uh, this model should have the screws, screw holes for the new keyboard, so that shouldn't be a problem. So, take out the Wi-Fi card. This is the SSD. Unledge the fan connector, pull it out, and then take it out. <coughs> put it where you put the screws because you need to know which screws those are. Uh, you have to unplug this cable. This cable goes to the little I.O. board. It's a board that has the card reader. And you also have to take that board out. For this repair, the screen assembly does not need to come out from the computer. Now it's time for the screws for the motherboard. I won't be as slow on this video as on the other ones because I have a couple of other things I need to finish after this. And since I don't get always that often actually retina models to replace keyboards on, I'll just do it, do a video because I'm not sure when I will have the opportunity to do it again. And be careful with this little thing here. A lot of times you won't notice the connector. 
and this one right here that's a backlight connector backlight for the keyboard trackpad connector and now we're gonna pull the motherboard out before we do that make sure that you have all the screws out you don't need to take off the heatsink there is no need for that you do need to uh, wiggle the board out because the battery is kind of holding it in place the battery cable and you need to unplug the DC board and set them on the side take these two pieces off, one is being held by a screw so take them off put them on the side and the next thing we're going to do is going to take two screws out that are holding right under this tape they're holding the battery frame you'll need this frame lifted a little bit so you can put two screws which are right below it that are going to be holding the keyboard and also next to that unglue the cable from the backlight this is the cable for the keyboard now we need to remove the backlight from the case the backlight is taped up so the tape is pretty good and it's kind of an aluminum foil type thing so you gotta be careful so you don't rip the whole thing off even if you rip these edges the backlight is still going to work but try not to because you'll need to use this again later on unless you are replacing the backlight as well slide it under and slowly separate a little by little if it doesn't come off try with a little bit of heat Plate. It's good in there, but it's not that hard to pull it out without ripping it completely, so it should be fine as long as you do it slowly and carefully. Again, you will need to pull a little bit so that it separates from the case. <coughs> and then, be careful here, there are two screws right under, two little black screws, Phillips head screws right under the battery frame you need to take these out and here comes the fun part you need to rip the keyboard out the keyboard is being held by these little bolts um, after you take them off you'll see inside there will be there will be little screw holes so lift it a little bit with something it's a little hard to pull it to begin with but then it will go easy like I said, this, uh, this is the fun part, ripping the thing out. There you go. There's the old keyboard. This person is replacing the keyboard just because the E key is broken and can be fit back in. That's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to clean this off a little bit. I'm going to blow the dust off. table where you're putting the computer so you don't scratch the surface of it. Just bring the keyboard. Okay, one thing you also need to keep in mind is that when you put a new keyboard in there, you will need to uh, put the screws that you don't, they don't, don't pretty much come with the keyboard, so make sure you buy the keyboard screws. These screws are the same for all the Mabel Pros and Mabel Cares. Uh, they are small screws that are holding the keyboard, because this time you need to screw the keyboard in. The first time you did not need to screw the keyboard, uh, the keyboard wasn't screwed in, you were just bolted in there slide the keyboard in and 
pull back those two screws that are right below the frame. Uh, don't be don't don't worry about these holes that are left until we rip the screws out yeah, and the keyboard out. You know, all of them have a small thread inside and it's soft metal so you'll be able to screw them in. Pretty much wherever you see a hole, put a screw in there. Like I said, if you take this to a shop that doesn't know how to replace the keyboard on these models, um, don't be afraid of the price they're going to give you. They're going to give you the price for the for replacing the whole polymers, pretty much. That's what they always do, especially in the Apple authorized uh, stores or even at the Apple store, uh, like if you go to the Genius Bar or whatever, and they're going to charge you an arm and a leg. There is, There are people like me who can replace this keyboard. so. If you don't end up replacing it yourself, you don't want to mess with this. Don't pay like five hundred dollars what they're asking or seven hundred what they're asking for the whole case replacement because that's not something you need to pay for. After you put all the screws back in there, the keyboard will feel like it was never removed and it will work perfect. So you get the computer back like it was before just with the keyboard fixed. Now, I'm not exactly sure how many screws we need here. I think there is about a hundred of them. Um, might miss a little bit. I'm probably going to have to go and find some. I have two bags of them but I don't think there is that many because this keyboard <coughs> has a lot of screws. <coughs> In case you miss some of the screw holes the keyboard in those areas might feel a little bit deep and let's say if you're doing this for a customer uh, they might not be that happy if when they're typing their fingers keep scraping off of the metal that is around the keyboard You can squeeze a little bit on the screw if it doesn't go in to tighten it up better but don't squeeze like a maniac then you will uh, press down on the screen from the other side and you might crack it. You don't want to crack the screen on this thing. This uh, this is a very expensive laptop and to fix the screen on this costs a lot of money. Also, when you put the backlight back in there, it will provide additional support for the keyboard from the bottom when the motherboard pushes down on it. So you won't feel that, you won't have that feeling like the keyboard went inside or something like that. problem for a lot of people might be even in the beginning to take out uh, all the components that they needed to ta be taken out from the computer so be careful don't rip any of the cables because if you end up following this video and you rip something you end up you're gonna end up with a computer that won't work or something on it won't work 
and you need to spend more money so be careful or have somebody who knows how to do this at least a professional do this for you I also do these repairs if you have any questions you can comment make a comment on the video or just send me an email whenever I have time I'll reply which is usually pretty fast yeah I'm definitely gonna have to go and find some more screws Okay, I'll be right back. I'll find more screws. <coughs> Here we go, I got more screws. Let's hope I don't I won't need more because I probably won't even have any more. So if you're replacing the keyboard and you're buying this keyboard, you're probably not going to get the keyboard with the screws. Uh, make sure you order a couple of bags of screws when you're ordering the screws. Uh, wherever you're buying them from type in A1278 keyboard screws that's uh, or MacBook Pro keyboard screws those are those screws are the same for all the models so you won't make a mistake they're going to fit
as you can tell already this is one of the most annoying things to do on a computer to replace the keyboard all MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs pretty much you have to do the same thing um, with MacBook Pros the keyboard is screwed in with MacBook Airs and Retina models keyboard doesn't have screws mostly it has these little bolts and you need to rip the old keyboard out put a new one in there and then screw it in at least here you have less of screw, screws to take out uh, pretty much when you rip it out you don't have any screws you just screw them back in with MacBook Pro 15 inch, 13 inch, 17 inch all the models you have to unscrew all these screws and then you have to screw them back in when you put another one in there so that's not fun Here. So now after we put all the screws in there, make sure that all the holes are filled, at least all the holes that you see. Sometimes when you rip these out you won't have all the holes, sometimes you'll have little things sticking up. Don't worry, you don't need to have all the screws in all the holes. Now we're going to put the backlight back on there. Align the backlight properly, you have these little holes where it's supposed to go. Press down so the tape goes back on the case, don't worry you didn't rip the backlight, the backlight is going to work just fine. And tape the keyboard connector back to the backlight and fold it here. You'll need to fold it because that's the way how the keyboard connector goes around on the board. Okay, so now we're gonna put back the DC board first. <coughs> no, sorry, not the DC board, the IO board that actually um, is the card reader on it. Okay, one very important thing when you put in this board then is that there are these little metal shields here. Don't let them go over the case, they have to go under the case. When they go under the case, you don't have a problem of putting this thing in. If they go over the case, you'll have a problem of putting this thing back in properly. Put the screws are holding you back in there. Now we're gonna put the motherboard back. Like I said, make sure that the keyboard connector is. Then actually, first thing you need to do when you put the motherboard back in. Is plug back in the DC board. This inboard cable is very short, so when you're plugging it back in, be careful. Make sure it goes in there and stays in there when you actually put the board back inside the case. It's a little bit annoying to take all these cables above the board, but you gotta do this, and there's no other way around it. Don't forget any of the cables under the board. If you do that, you'll need to take the board out to take them out. Especially this little one, this little one, trackpad, speaker. Before you screw the board in, I, what I do is always put the cables in there so that I make sure that I have all the cables that are supposed to go in there out and they're not <coughs> stuck under the board. Don't plug in the battery because what you're doing, you're pretty much plugging in these cables, if you don't plug, plug them in straight, you might actually short something out. Now here's one thing that we actually forgot. Um, this needs to go under the board, so again, good thing that we didn't screw it in, because otherwise we won't be able to put it in properly. Okay, this thing also needs to be taken out, put that in there. Put this one in there as well. This one has a screw that is completely unnecessary, so don't worry about that screw. Even if you don't put it back in there, 
try to remember to put this before you actually put the board so you don't have to go around like I am okay everything is there you have the backlight keyboard out we didn't leave that under this is something that the most often you, you will leave under it and let's screw the motherboard back in Assembling the computer is pretty fast after you're done with the keyboard, so it's not a big deal. Uh, plugging the new keyboard. Don't be be gentle with the keyboard connector. Don't be don't try to squeeze it in, push it in with sharp objects. You can damage the little flex cable and uh, end up having to replace the keyboard all over again. Believe me, you don't want to do that again. <clears throat> okay, so SSD goes here. And this little screw and the fan. Make sure you plug this in properly. And put the screws back in there holding the fan. The big headed screw goes on the right side. No, actually, sorry, not on the right side, on the left side. And the other two go in the other two slots. And this one is a little longer. Okay, so we can put this cable back in there now. This is very important. This is a camera cable and also has the Wi-Fi antenna on it. Don't forget to plug this in because in that case you won't have the camera and you won't have your Wi-Fi signal. Be careful with these little connectors. Uh, they're very easy to rip. You don't want to squeeze them too hard. You can damage the connector on the actual card or even on the cable, and it's not going to be easy to put it up, up there again. This little plastic thing goes back here. It's squeezing down on the heatsink, and it also is holding this cable in place so it doesn't move around. It doesn't really have any very important role in this whole computer, but since they put it there, let's put it back in. Second fan. Again, keep the battery out until you connect everything, just in case, because battery can have charge, and if you short something out, the charge can damage something on the board, potentially destroy it. Okay, check one more time, make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. Then put these two screws back in, the screws that are holding the frame for the battery. I'll also do a video on how to replace the battery on these or how to replace a trackpad. Uh, they can be replaced, don't listen to lies from technicians or Apple store that they can't be replaced and they're not meant to be replaced. Battery is glued. It's hard to take out and the key, the trackpad is right under the battery right here. It can be replaced. It's not impossible. It's actually very easy if you have a little bit of brain. I will do that also when I have one of the computers that need the battery or the trackpad. Usually they don't need either one of these two because these are pretty recent computers and these parts can go bad yet. Okay, that screw we need to find it. Okay, so here you have 10 screws. Two of those 10 screws are slightly shorter. I'll show you where those two screws go. Those two screws go right here. So don't put the long screws in there, they will be sticking out and you'll scratch the surface of the table or wherever you're putting the computer. One of the screws that I just dropped is actually the small one. 
I'll find it later, most likely. I'll just replace it with something else. After you put all the screws in, and test it out. If it turns on, you're good. It turned on, so that means we did a good job. Now the next step is to check the whole keyboard, make sure that all the keys work because if you replace the keyboard and you have a few keys that don't work then it pretty much didn't do anything so so I start usually with these you can check the escape key uh, backlight make sure that the backlight lights up the backlight will light up when you cover the camera because the sensor for the backlight is right there it senses if it's dark or not check your shift keys shift keys are very important okay seems like everything is functional and that's pretty much it that's how you replace a keyboard on a new retina 15 inch model I'll do the 13 inch as well when I have one I so far I've done a couple of them they very rarely need a keyboard and I'll try to do as many videos as possible on the new retina model so that you can see how to fix some of the stuff because these computers are insanely expensive to repair in the Apple store or authorized Apple repair centers. Okay, till the next one.